How can I change my self-concept to change my perception of reality? My perception of the people around me, the ones that I'm having a negative reaction to. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Anthony Cortino, Sacred Cobra, guiding you through spiritual awakening to change your reality and your relationships. Today, we answer one of the most common questions I get from all of my beginning students. And today I got it again as an email. How can I change my self-concept so I can change my perception of reality? This client is going through a divorce and he is still reacting to his perception of himself reflected in the relationships around him, i.e. the one he's going through a divorce with. He's reacting to the legal action. He's reacting to what he's hearing, what he's seeing in texts as if it was true. So this is a clear indication that the challenge, the problem he's having is within his self-concept. Now, he knows that this is showing up in his external reality because of his self-concept. But the question is, how do I change it? How do I stop reacting? How do I change internally so much that when these things happen right in front of me, I'm not falling for that current illusion, that screen of reality, because I'm choosing something better, something different, something within alignment with my truest vision for myself and my family. How do I do it? That's what we're talking about today. So the first thing is we want to notice, is this a negative thing? Someone's being rude to me. Someone's disrespecting me. Someone's not valuing me enough. Am I seeing this as a negative, hardcore thing? So I want to tell you, don't maximize it. So you perceive it as negative. Don't make it the end of the world. Don't make it your excuse to assume they did it 10 times worse than they did. And if you don't stop them from doing it right now, they're never going to change. They're going to do it worse and worse and worse, and they're going to ruin your life. It's the maximization issue. If you perceive something as negative, you're already starting to put a label and therefore surrendering your actual power to that label because they're no longer a person in your reality. They are a label and your perception of yourself in reaction to that label is the challenge. That's what we want to fix. So stop perceiving them or this situation as negative. Stop maximizing it, making it worse. When you use your past memories to validate the pain, we want to work on that too. That doesn't serve us here. We're creating reality moment by moment. So when we notice a negative comment, a disrespectful feeling or a vibe, use your power of awareness. Notice it, grab a hold of it, not as fueling the fire to keep yourself triggered or gaslight yourself, but instead grab it, notice it within your power to awaken and let it go. That is just an attachment to an idea in your head of what that thing means. Let go of the need to react, and this will change your assumption of yourself and therefore your self-concept. Don't label something as negative. Instead, be grateful, show appreciation. You created your version of them that you're observing to show you what your I am statement is, to show you what's truly going on, your inner dialogue, i.e. they're showing you your self-concept, the thing you can change, the thing you must change, the thing you want to change so you can stop reliving the reality that you're not enjoying. Remember, when you put a label on something or a person, they are going to become that label more and more. The more you use it, the more you express it, the more you tell yourself and others that they are this label. Labeling never solves anything. It keeps us in a victim consciousness. It keeps us stuck observing and regurgitating the same thing or getting worse over and over and over again. And then we think that we're, and we have nothing to do with our circumstances. We're just a slave to them, a victim. And your self-concept is going to show you what's going on. When you have this going on, your behavior is going to be manipulated by it. The thoughts in your head, the self-dialogue, the arguments you're having with this other person in your mind is going to play tape all day long. You can say you're being positive externally. The thought in your head, the conversation, the story and the tape that's playing through most of the day is what is actually creating your reality, not the two minutes before you got into a conversation with somebody where you chose to be positive in that last moment before it was too late. By then, you're just fooling yourself. If you actually change your self-concept, you're not going to react to anything they say or do. In fact, they're just not going to do it. 
they're going to do what you assume because they always have. The next thing, if you are forgiving but not forgetting, you didn't forgive at all. Nothing's going to change. You're waiting for it to manifest again and then you're surprised when it actually happens. This man I'm working with is having the same moment repeating itself and having the same reactions every single time, even in couples therapy. He is noticing. He is letting go, but he's not forgetting it. He's not truly dropping the story. He's doing the work. He's pivoting. He's awakening. He's finding his bliss, but he's still looking outside of himself for confirmation of his self-concept to change. He's not practicing this to forgive and forget seven times 77. Not seven, not 70 times, but over and over again. I'm bringing this up because I'm seeing this a lot in many of my sessions. There's the issue of if you forgive and you don't forget, I know what happens. And we're seeing this story continue in another shape or form, another layer of the onion, maybe in the next relationship or in work or with your kids versus those who are choosing to truly forgive and actually literally forget it from their history. The difference is amazing. The reality shifts happen much faster, much more synchronicity, way more aligned action, domino affecting each other on both cycles. In either direction, it's undeniable. So what I'm seeing is the individuals who are focusing on the problem and learning to recognize the fault and therefore notice it, let it go and forgive that act or that person, what's being done to them. They're getting the results, but they're not lasting. And here's why, because it keeps manifesting over and over again. They have to keep pivoting, keep noticing, keep choosing to let go, but because they're not forgetting it, the next time it happens, they immediately have to process all over again, creating another cycle. Better than what they had before, but we're still running into the fact that they're running into their own limitation. Their belief is that that person is going to keep doing it, even though they're forgiving them. That is an illusion. That's not how it works. On the other spectrum, those who are choosing to forgive others themselves and forget what other misdeed was done to them or for themselves, forgetting their self-worth issues, forgetting their poverty and lack issues, forgetting and dropping the trauma because the excuse to say it whenever we get triggered is exactly what's keeping the trauma alive and happening again. And so we have to drop the story and pretend it never happened again. This is a stage in your development. Not everyone's ready for it, but if you are running into this cycle of you've done your self work, you have your faith in alignment, but yet your trauma is literally acting itself out over and over and over again, you might want to drop the excuse that you have to remember it and you'll never forget it. No, forget it, forgive it, drop it, and it will be gone. These individuals, when they do the forgiving and forgetting completely, the life changes almost overnight. So to recap, to answer the question, how can I change my self-concept? so I can change my perception of reality and those around me. Stop immediately and maximizing the label of this is or what you are doing is negative. Therefore, you're not going to react to it so harshly. That's number one. Don't label things as negative all the time. See them as a gift, a chance to pivot, a chance to let go of an I am statement about yourself that is still manifesting in your relationship or in the world around you. And number two, choose to forgive and forget. Don't just forgive alone. When you forgive and say, but I'm not going to forget, you're actually holding that red flag out in front of you for the whole world to see and you're waiting for it to happen again just in case. Since we know that reality creation starts from within and eventually manifests without because all of reality is already created and we are cycling through the realities 0.0001% at a time, now that we know this through quantum physics, and through our spirituality and through our own breakthroughs manifesting, we have to recognize when you want to forgive something, forgive it in yourself and also forget it in them and forget it in you because everyone is you pushed out. By doing these two things, not labeling things as negative and forgiving and forgetting at the same time, your self-concept of yourself is going to change dramatically overnight maybe or instantly and you're going to see change in your instant reality, the one right in front of you. 
creators, thank you for hanging out today. I hope to see you in the next one. Remember that you are sacred, you are worthy, and you are loved. And if you want to dive deeper into more exclusive content, if you want to be a part of my upcoming live, aligning your vision with your mission, living the vision in a 3D dimension, take a look at the description below, click on the link, and join our membership right here on the YouTube channel. This is Anthony Cortino, Sacred Coba. I'll see you next time. Cheers.